Welcome to Portraits in the Park Portrait Photography Assistant Training. The key to a successful Portraits in the Park photography session is shaping with light, expressions and posing. A good photographer's assistant is essential to achieve a high ratio of stunning photos effortlessly and efficiently. The following Portraits in the Park training video has been produced to introduce anyone to assisting for portrait photography. When and if you make it to the end of the video, we hope you're keen to learn more on the job and get busy creating stunning photographs. Subjects covered 1. Expectations 2. Assistant equipment tasks Operate light modifiers, operate flash, lighting tips, environment, other equipment 3. Assistant client tasks, posing and expression Expectations The following points are key expectations in your role at Portraits in the Park as Portrait Photography Assistant. Expectations Keen to work in a creative environment, playing a pivotal role in sculpting beautiful and emotive pictures. Friendly and genuine interest in working intimately with lots of different people, young and old. Possible long days, the best portrait light is dusk and dawn. Dress comfortably, smart yet approachable. Be mindful of the session goals and aim to anticipate the shot list. People sitting for a portrait are usually self-conscious. It's important they are confident in our skills as portrait photographers. Most expectations when working in the creative field with people revolves around being personable. Techniques and technical ability can easily be taught in comparison. Assistant equipment tasks. When it comes to photographing people, there are two key areas for an assistant to focus on. One, effective use of their equipment, and two, the client. The photographer will direct other things such as creative decisions, environment, and composition. The following covers lighting, environment, and other equipment. Operate light modifiers. These are tools to reflect and diffuse light. The goal is to create depth, definition, and attention, or hide unflattering areas in shadow. By shaping light around the subject, either reflecting light onto the subject or blocking light for the desired effect. A single light defines the subject and then other lights or reflectors are added to complement. Small reflectors can be used to highlight features such as baby's hands or wedding rings. The amount of light is determined by the distance, angle, size, color and material of the reflector. Reflectors can also be used to fan hair creating movement. The following videos outline basic principles for a foundation to build on. Don't worry if it's all getting a bit overwhelming. The best and quickest way to learn will be hands-on. The subject will ideally be positioned with the sun to their back, diffused through foliage. If in direct sunlight, it will act as a rim light, or with the sun off to one side, add character, sharpen lines, and contrast. A reflector is used to direct light into shadow areas. Use the silver side. If the light is too intense, use the white side. If too cold, use gold. Ideally, reflectors should be used close to the subject, just out of view of the camera frame, to create shape across the face or minimize skin texture. You must see a white reflection in the eyes, known as a catch light. This adds a sparkle. The bigger the catch lights, the brighter the eyes appear. Be careful about bouncing light from beneath the subject, as this can look ghoulish, but can be required to push some light into the eyes if they are looking dark and lifeless. Four steps to using a reflector. One. Stand in front and slightly to either side of the subject, preferably left-hand side of the photographer, meaning the lightest area of the image leads the viewer towards the subject, as if reading from left to right and towards the eyes. 2. Direct light back onto the subject from slightly above the eye line. 3. Feather using the edge of the light source to avoid them squinting uncomfortably. This is achieved by aiming the light past the subject or up and over the subject. It helps to even the light across your subject. 4. Move closer to the subject and stop when his or her face pops. Look for a flattering lighting effect, shape, shadow, sparkle in the eye. Reflect more light until you first start to see large catch lights in each eye. This is when the intensity of light is just right. Scrims or diffusers are used to block out harsh sunspots and shadows in the middle of the day while retaining color and quality. They produce soft, beautiful portrait light. Harsh light is more for the dramatic looks like fashion. Operating flash. The use of flash in portrait photography depends entirely on the existing lighting, also called the available light. It's a little more difficult because you can't see the exact effect of your lighting on the subject. The direct light from a small flash head is quite harsh and needs to be diffused or bounced for a more softer, flattering light. 
Flash can also be used to create effects and flare. Basic use of flash is to fill shadows. Most common use for flash in portrait photography is to act as background lights creating a glow or rim light around the subject, separating them from the background. Usually placed directly behind the subject on a small stand out of view of the camera lens. As a photography assistant, you would place tripods or hold flash heads in the correct direction to the client. Lighting tips. Lighting outdoors revolves heavily around intensity, quality and direction. The main light source is most often positioned to one side of the face to create shape. It also reveals texture. Fill light softens the intensity of the shadows and reduces unflattering texture. It's around half a meter above the subject's eyes, rarely below eye level. Avoid side lighting on women's faces with only one key light so as not to accentuate skin aging or imperfections. Keep the reflector as close to the camera and subject as possible. Observe the shadows to reduce complexity and crossing all over the face. Larger the source of light and closer, the softer the light falling on the subject, filling in unflattering skin texture. Always start with one light. Look at the nature of the existing light and where it's coming from. The goal is to have a catch light in the eyes or glow in every shot without calling attention to itself. Seek out other sources of light, walls, pavements, street lights. Lighting tips continued. There are two main ways to light a face, broad and short lighting. Broad lighting means putting the main light on the same side as the visible ear with short the opposite and producing the most interesting portraits. The decision will be based on the subject's features. Use short lighting if the subject has a broad face, helping to make the subject look thinner by putting much of the face in shadow. If, however, the subject is very thin, broad lighting increases the amount of the image that is highlighted and makes the subject appear more full. Broad lighting is often used with people with glasses to eliminate glare. Important parts of the subject are emphasized with light, while less important areas are kept shaded. Try to avoid lighting the subject too evenly, it makes for a boring portrait. Shadows and highlights create mystery, drama and visual high points. Our primary consideration with outdoor portrait photography is the overhead direction of lighting. Environment Dusk and dawn light is the best portrait light as it's soft, even and emits a radiant glow. Direct sunlight always produces hard shadows that need to be filled or diffused. Overcast days are like huge diffusers in the sky producing soft, even light, but they lack direction. They're less interesting and require light modifiers to shape and contrast. The lack of a blue sky can be unappealing also. Frontal light can be flat, featureless or harsh, overblown. Benefits include few visible shadows if reducing imperfections or skin texture is a good thing. Front light often accentuates colour. A big downside, if it's too strong, the subject might squint. In overhead midday, light modifiers or scrims are required to help lessen the harsh shadows in the eye sockets and under the nose and lower lip. Backlighting is used to silhouette and pop out the subject's shape. Side or cross lighting creates drama. Distinctive shadows and highlights has a very three-dimensional feel to it, reveals texture and form, preferably when the sun is low in the sky. Rim lighting creates a highlight on the edge of the subject, a dramatic effect directing attention to the subject. Other equipment. Help carry equipment and keep gear tight and away from the background, being mindful that the background can shift 180 degrees at any time. Be aware of the safety of clients, especially children, using a lint brush, wipes and cleaning, clean up after babies, kids or dogs if need be. A mirror so that the client can check their appearance. Bubbles bottle with a wand. Bring smiles to children's faces every time. Can quickly change the mood of a session. A photography assistant experienced with lighting will be observant to shadows, intensity, angle, length, highlights, reflections, the weather and location of equipment. Assistant client tasks. Modern portrait photography is more casual and candid, but professionals still craft the session for eye-catching photos. Most clients aren't models. They need to be directed into flattering, interesting poses and radiant expressions. Without overwhelming the client, a good portrait photography assistant can help distract or take their mind off being photographed whilst enlivening a total stranger. Posing. The photographer will pose a subject, but it's important for an assistant to learn posing fundamentals and demonstrate for clients. Every client we collaborate with is different. It's our job to cater for their personality and style. Posing. Photographing children makes up a large part of portrait photography. Directing them can be challenging, 
but success comes from your ability to connect, being personable and creative. Assist when posing babies and children to get the shot. Pull faces the baby can mimic. Poke out your tongue. Have props handy to attract babies and children's attention. The most successful portrait photography sessions are the ones where the subject doesn't feel like they're being photographed and they don't want to look artificial in their posing. Observe fashion magazines, advertising and media. Identify the predominant lines in each pose as well as in each scene. The predominant lines determine the overall feel of a pose. Until you can identify these lines, you can't effectively pose a subject to achieve the desired look. With groups, help to place heads at different levels and bring people together. Even with more relaxed portrait photography rules, a few still apply. Men want to look masculine but not rigid and emotionless. Women want to look feminine and confident. Expression. The client's expression is everything. They tend to reflect the mood of the photographer and assistant. Keep it light, fun, professional, and well-mannered. Expression. Keep the client relaxed and interacting. Your attitude is important in bringing out the best in the client. When people are tense, they rarely make a good portrait. Be alert to mood changes and assist the photographer to keep the vibe upbeat. Avoid dead air. It's bad. Even awkward chatter is better than dead air. If assimilating with a subject that is negative or swears, don't match their behavior. Remain well-mannered, positive, upbeat, and enthusiastic. Explain what is happening. The setup and reassuring comments and compliments are always effective. Making a true connection by talking with your subjects about their passions, loved ones, and hobbies will make them relax and lighten up. Expression continued. The client is usually directed to look down the barrel of the lens. On occasion, we do need them to look away or in the direction of the main light source. The best expressions, though, are looking at another person and where an assistant plays a huge role. The client needs to be engaged and made to feel a part of the process. Don't show frustration. Never make subjects feel it's their fault that the shoot isn't going well. Be confident, projecting assuredness. If not, they can start to lose faith. Compliments should be realistic and sound sincere. Be friendly, but not too personal. Don't do politics and religion, even if the subject initiates the topic, nor comedy unless you're actually funny. Try to encourage short responses and avoid talking about yourself unless you're encouraged to do so. An experienced photography assistant will be personable and take a genuine interest in the subject. Everything else builds from there. Most of all, enjoy yourself. You never want to have an expression on your face you don't want on the client's face in the final portrait. The point of difference at Portraits in the Park is our relaxed sessions, attention to detail and efficiency. At the end of the shoot, the client should feel invigorated that we have delivered and can't wait to see the images. Your role as an assistant is essential in meeting and exceeding both business and client expectations. Portraits in the Park photography assistants shape with light, help with gear, assist with posing, have great mood for glorious expressions, are creatively observant, are keen to learn. Congratulations, you've made it. If you think photography assisting is for you, we'd love to receive your application. Apply here.